Hey everybody, <laughs> how you doing? Back with another exciting video and I'm actually out in the woods today. Out here where you can hear all of nature and all of the birds and uh, it's cicadas or cicadas. I'm not real sure it starts with the C. I'm Southern, you'll have to excuse me. <laughs> anyway, uh, a long time ago I did a video about knives and in, those, in that video I did these little mini tripods that you could carve with no cordage. And a lot of people like them things. And I said they're used for bed frames, but I never showed them. And uh, a lot of people had asked for me to show those. And after I did my last uh, El Cheapo heated tarp shelter, people were asking, what kind of bed would you use in this thing? And so <clears throat> it's been requested so many times that I decided to go ahead and just do a video on the bed. And Another thing about the bed is there's another neat little trick that goes with this thing that uh, during the heat of the summer, now during the winter, you can bundle up, you can have a fire, have on more clothes, more insulation, more sleeping bag, but in the summer when it gets hot, there's not much escaping it. So there's a trick that I have discovered over the years that helps with the, uh, to deal with the heat when you're sleeping. Uh, kind of an unusual trick, kind of unortho unorthodox, I guess, but <clears throat> it works for me. <laughs> so let's find a spot, get out the machete, get out the knife, and get to going. Love the sounds of the forest. <laughs> All right, I found a pretty good spot here. Now, this is kind of a minimalist thing, but it takes a lot of work. Now, before any of you survival experts out there say, Ooh, you're burning too many calories. That takes too long. <laughs> This is not a survival bed. It's more of a bushcraft slash camping type bed. And if you enjoy cutting, carving, and chopping, and you enjoy machete time, you enjoy time with a knife and a folding saw, then this is a fantastic project. This is just so cool. So you need a knife, a machete, and a folding saw, okay? Now the first version of it, or halfway through it, I'm gonna show you what it would take for it to be like pure bushcraft. But then I'm going to show you how you can turn it into more like a, a, a luxurious camping bed. <laughs> so let's get this pack off, get my machete out, and find some wood to get going. Let's uh, set my stuff down here. Got my water bottle here. Now in the summertime, there's always all kinds of ants and bugs and things on the ground. So what I like to do is I like to carry... See, that's part of it. I like to carry a, a, a mat of some kind. And what this is, is this is part of a, uh, this is the back of an old industrial uh, raincoat. And I like to put it out here so I can have a place to lean, a place to sit. Actually, I'm gonna turn it up this way. Yeah, that's better. There's mud on it from last time. I have my water bottle and my pack. This is something that I'm going to show later in the video. This is something that I'm going to show later in the video. And we're going to start out with a folding saw. okay? And I've got my machete and more strapped to my side. So let's go grab some wood and get started on this project. So the first thing you need is some big old long poles. You're gonna need about three or four of these. And right off the bat, these little tripods, if I remember right, I think this is a, a silky, uh, this is a 240, yeah, it's a 240. And if I remember right, a lot of times on these little projects, I will try to judge things on either hand length, arm length, length of a saw, or length of an open saw. And if I remember right, every piece has to be just a little bit little bit shorter than the length of my saw. So I'm gonna saw up some pieces here and then I'll show you how to carve them. Oh, and we're gonna have to have a drag a log over here so that we can have something that we can chop against. I don't like chopping into the ground.
got me an old rotten piece of wood right here. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna carve me, let's see, if it ain't too rotten, make sure there's not too many ants in it. I'm gonna carve me a flat spot. That way it won't be rolling around everywhere. All right, ensure that there ain't a whole bunch of ants in it. And then we'll carve a little spot up here on top. And that will be my work area. All right, now take the smallest stick You've got three sticks, and this is what's going to make up your tripod. The first stick, what you want to do is you want to carve out. Let's carve out a little square. All right. Lay it on one side. Lay it on another side. Lay it on that side. Now I'm gonna carve this thing down to about, let's see. I'm gonna stop at a certain point. And you'll wanna look, because there'll be a certain point that you wanna stop and you wanna make sure that all the sides are parallel. And then there's gonna be a certain point that you're gonna stop at, because you're gonna have to carve the other pieces to match. All right, now let's take this next piece here and we're gonna carve two flats on it. All right. Now if you'll notice the chopping power is out on the end of this machete, but you can chop right out here when you want to have more of a precise cut because the length of this, you don't have quite as precise a cut, but you can still chop here because the weight out here is helping to pull the machete down. So I think that right there may be okay. We'll go with that, all right? All right, next step what you wanna do is you wanna kinda of refine the end with a knife. All right, so I'm looking at it and you see how this kinda of curves out? I want to try to straighten that up. And that's got a high spot. I'm straighten that up. I say that's starting to look a little, little bit better. All right, so let's leave it at that. And then the next thing you want to do is you want to set this on here somewhere's about here okay now what you want to do is you want to mark it off with your knife mark it there and there you're marking each corner like I said this is a lot of a uh, lot of cutting and carving but <clears throat> if you enjoy it and you enjoy time with your knife then it's a good project All right, I don't know if you can see that or not. Yeah, I think you can. There's a little square in it. So what you're gonna do now is you're gonna take your knife and you're gonna push and wiggle. And be, be careful and don't slip and cut yourself. As you can see, I have it in the palm of my hand. That way there's just, there's no way that I can slip on it. And so this is what you're going to do is you're going to push on this and push on it and push on it. And be very, very, very careful when you're doing this. Now when you get to the point to where you feel like you're deep enough, then you can start popping out pieces of it. And don't try to pop out too big of a piece because you'll break the tip of your knife off. All right. <clears throat> So as you can see, I'm slowly forming a little square. 
Now what you do is you just continue doing that until you get through to the other side. Another technique you can do to speed things up once you've gotten it started that I'm sure a lot of people won't uh, agree with is you can actually baton you can actually baton your knife in. Now, as long as you go straight in and you wiggle this a ways and you don't wiggle that a ways it ain't gonna hurt the knife. And I know Amora is a rat tail, it's not a full tang, but I've never had a problem with this. And it ain't like I'm beating it senseless. Just continue chipping away there. Now if it was dry hard wood, that's one thing, but this is relatively soft and gummy. You see, once you get the whole foot through it, then you're gonna start carving hit a uh, square for this to fit through it. See, I started from the other side now, and now I've got a square hole. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna cut and carve on this thing a little bit, like that. until this fits in here. Right. Now we're getting somewhere. Now for the third piece. Now just a minute ago, my camera completely locked up. Completely, totally. <laughs> so it locked up and I lost the beginning of the last scene that I just did, so I'm gonna redo it. And that's the reason why there's two little splits in here, okay? But anyway, what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna explain again with this other camera <laughs> what I did. I hate that other camera. I got. One of them was a brand new camera, one of them was a remanufactured camera, and it blanks out on me sometimes. But anyway, what I do is I look for these forked trees like this. That way what I can do is I can put the piece of wood in here, and I can hold it back here with this hand so that it, my hand is safe and steady. And what I do is this piece that's put together with a square, I hold it up against it and make a couple of marks until I feel like I'm happy. Now, when I'm sawing on this thing right here, okay, when I'm sawing, this is a silky saw, so I'm cutting on the pull stroke, all right? As I'm cutting on the pull stroke, I'm putting pressure back here with my hand pulling it to stabilize the wood. Now, if I ever slip as I'm starting, the saw is going to come back here and hit the tree, and my hand is protected, so that's another good way of doing this stuff. See if that's deep enough. I think it might be deep enough. So I've got two saw cuts in it. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go and I'm gonna baton it and get this piece of wood out. Let's hold this up a minute. Let's see if I can get this on camera. You're wanting to match. You're wanting to match this to the width of this. And see, so as long as you get it close, that's good. You can always carve to match. Now I've got my more out. And what I'm going to do is now this will split the wood if you're not real careful. So what I'm going to do, uh, let's see, find a place. Prop my knee. Get my little baton out. And what you're going to do is you're going to start at this edge here. Give it a tap. Pull it out. You don't want to beat in too hard. Start at this edge. Oh, and see it just cracked. That is something you did not want to happen. Go to this side. Maybe the crack will be minimized. 
Yeah, see it's starting to crack. Hopefully this thing won't break. Yeah, look at that. This this piece ain't even gonna work. But for the sake of the video, I'll tie it off a paracord here. Because I don't have time to... I gotta make five more sets of these. That or I'll put this one out on the end. Let's do some more batoning on this side. Now this is green wood. This should not be splitting like this. That's not good, but that's reality. It's just the way it is. All right, let me see if I can pop this out of here. All right, now that's popped out of there. All right, now the way this is supposed to work, it's not supposed to have that big crack in it. Hopefully some of the other wood won't. But this is the way that tripod is supposed to work. It's supposed to go together just like this. Let me move this. You have this, and then this goes on here. Just like that. Now I'm going to have to put some paracord around this one. I hate to do it, because it's supposed to be all carved. And hopefully the other ones will turn out pretty good, because I think... No, actually, I think this will be okay like this. Because the wood, when I go to put the wood on here, the pressure of it is going to be against this. Yeah, that crack is going to be okay. Depending on how you put this, because you can put it like that, or you can put the wood like this, and that'll put pressure against it this way. Okay, yeah, this will still be a no-corded setup. Okay, all right. Because I keep forgetting, you can put the piece here, or you can put the piece here. And either way, it's gonna put pressure on it. If this piece was cracked, it wouldn't work. But if this is cracked, it's okay. And I hate that it did it. Oh, there's one more step that you gotta do before you before we move on. Now, the third and final step on this thing. Let's see, put this up. Now, this is gonna be one of the tripods. This is gonna be one of six. It's gonna have the uh, long bed frame on like this. Now, if you put this on here, these are just gonna spread out and it'll break them because all the pressure will be up here. What you want to do is you want to sharpen the ends of them so that they'll dig in the ground. So what you want to do now is sharpen the end of every one of them as blunt as possible because if they're, if they're too steep, they may break. Let me put my foot over here on this thing. So I can hold this down, the machete is chopping into it. Alright, just like that. You're going to cut the end of every one of them. Pull this over here. Sometimes you can cut it into fours, four in a triangle like that, and then carve the tips off to make it sharp. So you want it to dig in the ground just like that. Let's see. I'm going to make this one a little sharper. So here's your three pieces that you need. All right. You need your square end piece. Your piece with a square hole in it, and your piece with a fork. This goes in here, and then this goes on here. What you want to do is you want to stab one in the ground, stab the other in the ground, and then stab that one in the ground. Alright, so that when you put weight on it, it'll hold up. And you've got six of these. Okay? So now what you got to do, for me, I'm going to take a break. <laughs> I got my, my handy water pouch because I got to make five more of these. It's already getting kind of hot. 
just because you're out in the woods doesn't mean you have to be an animal and drink out of the out of the water bottle. <laughs> oh me. Oh, always remember in the summertime when you're out working in the heat, stay hydrated. <laughs> oh, that's good stuff. And the final one. All right, we have six of them now. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna find the long uh, side poles. Now, if that was just what you call a common bushcraft bed where you came out here with nothing but a knife, machete, and saw, you would just lay poles across it like this and then lay poles and, poles and boughs across the top like this. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use my tube bed. So what I'm going to do, you may have seen this in a, another video, my double tube bed. What I'm going to do, pull this out here, is I'm going to pick a tree that's just a little bit longer the length of these two tubes, which is probably going to be about my height. So, because when I carry this down to the ground and bring it up to my belt line, and then I bring it up to my belt line again, it's right even with my head. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get a couple of trees that are just a little bit bigger than head height. And then I'm going to show you what comes next. Sound good? <laughs> now what I did is I went to an area where there was clusters of trees. Because sometimes when there's too many trees, you can thin out one or two of them and it'll help the others grow. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this one and I'm going to stand here. And I hope that this is thick enough. <clears throat> but this was a tree that I think it didn't hurt to, to thin out. And so I'm going to go a little bit above my head and I'm going to saw it off. Alright. Good solid wood in there. Now I think that's going to be one piece and I'm going to hope and pray it don't break. <laughs> So I gotta find another piece over here. And there's a lot of little trees scattered in and out everywhere. And I'm not gonna cut any of them. Uh, I don't like cutting trees like that. I'm gonna find where there's a mass of trees where there's too many. That way when you thin them out, it'll allow the others to grow. Now this is a prime example of what I'm talking about. You've got three larger trees and one smaller tree right there, okay? Now there's a thing called sustainable forestry and thinning. And that's perfectly fine, but I don't believe in going in and just cutting everything out that you possibly can. So, but in a case like this, it's actually good for the forest because you're leaving three bigger trees and you're taking out the one smaller tree. All right, so I have my two here. I have my two here now, and they're not very big, but I'm hoping that they'll do for this task. <laughs> uh, there's another little trick to this too. You can make all this stuff bigger, but it takes forever. And this is also, this is something that if you have a permanent shelter, this is a good bed to make. And I'm probably gonna go back to my truck and get a, a bucket, and I'm gonna put all these in, and I'm gonna keep this. This stuff's not going to waste. I'm going to keep this for future use. And if I ever have a semi-permanent shelter or whatever, I'm going to set this thing up. So it ain't like the wood's going to total waste. 
Now it seems like you can just fool around with this stuff forever, but what I'm going to do for the sake of making things simpler, I'm going to take the two poles and I'm going to lay my I'm going to lay my bag through it. Just like this. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to lay it on the ground. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to put two tripods out on the end. And then I'm going to go and I'm going to put two tripods in the middle. All right. All right. So what I'm going to do is I think I'm going to take, I'm going to take the two biggest tripods. And the two biggest tripods, I think, the ones that I think are the strongest, are going to go in the middle. And I think it'll be those. It'll be those two. So you take the smaller ones and put the smaller ones out on the end. So what I'm going to do now, let's see, I want the center of it to be about right here. So I'm going to stick this in the ground. Wait a minute. I'm going to put that one in the ground. And then put this one in the ground. Then put this one in the ground. All right, and I'm going to push on all three legs. <clears throat> And then I'm going to set this end up on here and give it a little bit of a push. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull up this other end and I'm going to take another tripod and then I'm going to try to stab it into the ground into the right location. Let's see, now I want to make it to where the forks are inside. This will be just like that. Alright, so I'm going to stab that in the ground. Stab that in the ground. And stab that in the ground. And then set this on it. Alright? So I've got one end done. Let's move to the middle. Now I'm putting some in the middle. Now remember the forked ends go into the bed. In this way. Now I'm going to lift this up, try to get it to where it won't fall. Stab this in the ground. Stab that in the ground. Stab that in the ground. All right. Now we're gonna put that back on. Like that. And then we're gonna put this one right here. Then stab it in the ground. Now I'm going to try to keep this location if I can. It's kind of hard to set it up with the tube on it. Now that's not quite right. You got to be able to put this one on here and this one on here. I see this tripod needs to be turned just like that. Perfect. Just like that. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to do one side first. Alright, let's put that like that. Alright. Just like that. Now I'm going to do the third one back here. I'm going to put another tube on here and do the third one back here. I'm going to put the third one on, but I'm going to put this tube on first. Slide the tube on. <clears throat> now I want this to be inside. Like this. Now see that sticks curve, that's another good reason why you want to do it this way. Alright, now one of them is in line. Now this piece is going to be kind of short, but that's okay. Because I have them all in line. Alright. Flash forward. It's Saturday morning. I make coffee. I sit down to my computer, I get ready to edit my 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 uh my video. The last four or five frames 
solid black. Unrecognizable format. I can't believe it. Luckily, like I had said in the video, there's so much work involved in this stuff that I saved it all. And I put it in my truck and I carried it home with me. So, there, I'm not going to refilm all the cutting and the carving parts. So, I just decided just to set it up here in the backyard and show you how it works and talk just a little bit about it. That is if I can get the cats away from it. <laughs> so, let's give this a try. Alright, you can see that I have all six of the little tripods set up. Earlier in the video, we went through uh, how to uh, carve them and everything. And so what I've done is I have beat them in the ground. And the next step, what you want to do, once you have these in the ground, you want to set your poles on, okay? And then you want to take your Alabama hammer, <laughs> or a rock if you don't live in Alabama, <laughs> and you want to beat every single one of these into the ground. Every one of them. And you want to get this to where these are nice and level. There you go. That stick's curved. Curved sticks ain't good. So, what you want to do is you can see now. Now, the idea behind that is, is the reason that you want to beat them in the ground is because you, you know how I sharpened them? You want to beat them down into the ground because they have a tendency when you lay in this bed, they'll pull in. You don't want that to happen. So now what you do is once everything, you've got these things beat down to where they're level, one may be higher than the other and these, these uh, side poles here may rock. You don't want that. Just continue beating them down until the poles are level. Now we're going to put the cloth on and then I'll show you the next step. Luckily, Hebert found him a little bug to keep him occupied. Maybe that'll keep him out of my hair for a little while. All right, next step, of course, what you want to do is you want to pull your uh, arranger cloth to where it's a little bit closer. You've got the cloth on it now. The next thing that I like to do you can put paracord on each end to kind of help keep it from jumping around because sometimes those bars will jump out when you try to climb into the bed. But what I do is I put a small bungee cord on the end. Uh, people know I started experimenting with carrying a new pouch for my clips and carabiners and bungees. And uh, I like this one. It carries everything that I have. But I, I, got a, I found a new one. There's a, a shop on Etsy it's called Fox Light Gear. And uh, everybody knows I make bags, but I've always had, <laughs> always had trouble with zippers. And so this one has got a zipper. I've always had trouble with sewing zippers into these things. And see, this is a very, very neat little small pouch. And it's got my clips and bungees in them and things. But anyway, I just kind of wanted to share that because it's very cool. I've never been able to make bags with zippers. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take these little bungees and just secure each end. That way, like I said, they won't fall off when I'm climbing in and out of the bed. Just a quick little wrap around. I like to just wrap this thing around a couple of times. Secure it. And see, that just that keeps this thing from popping off. It holds it down in place. Now, I just do each end. I don't do the middle because the bigger ones are in the middle. Cause see, as you're getting into it, sometimes there's not much height right here, and sometimes this thing will fall off. So just a quick little stretch around right there. 
and that right there will keep it from popping up and out. See, this branch is curved. It's already wanting to kind of move around, but you want it to seat down in here. point you can lay in it if you want to all right but there's another little trick that I'm going to add to this it's got to do with the hot weather that I was telling you about okay now one thing about this right here I have very much a dip in this if you have this if you have these spread out too far apart and this right here this part too taut when you lay in it it's going to pull these the tripods out of the ground because you're going to be pulling pressure in but if you put a slight bow to it then it's okay it won't pull but the only way to make this thing good and tight is if you take these tripods right here and you pound them in the ground about three inches mine are only pounded in by about an inch you can still see some of the uh, sharp points right here okay. now the other little trick that you can do a lot of times whenever i have a shelter that's out in the open i will uh let me find my thing I'll, t I'll, I'll take two, two logs or two pieces of rope and tie these tubes up between trees. But this is for freestanding shelter, like if you don't have any trees to tie to. And the other thing of this is, is you can t during the summer, you can take some uh, bug repellent, and down here at the bottom, you can spray every single one of these at the base so that ants won't crawl up at night. That's more of the beauty of it, because um, <clears throat> if you have... If you have like a, a, a hammock or, or, or a tarp bed or a bunk bed or the, the logs tied between the trees, ants and bugs and all kinds of things in the summer can crawl up those trees and crawl across and get to you. But with this, when you're freestanding, spray the bottom of every leg and they won't come get you. Okay. So now here's the other trick. Now, uh, when I was camping with the, the uh, Cub Scouts and the Boy Scouts, we did a lot of car camping. And that's when we used to bring those big inflatable air mattresses and the bigger they were they would fill with air the bigger they were the colder they would get when you slept on them uh, so I learned from that and I remembered that and I experimented with it later on and I got to thinking if you have a climate static V insulated or if you have one of those inflatable um, thermo rest the insulated ones the kinds that blow up with air or self inflate if they're insulated they'll keep you warm uh, if they're just air, you'll freeze to death. All right. Now that can also apply to your advantage in the summertime. And some people actually bring pool floats because they blow up bigger, like this one. <laughs> now this is a pretty expensive one. This is a heavy duty Intex. Okay. Uh, this is very, very heavy duty. This is a heavy canvas. And uh, this was what was folded up in the backpack in the other part of the video. Now you could probably carry a regular pool float if you wanted to but uh, they're not as heavy duty. And if you just use like a regular Thermarest pad, they only blow up about an inch. But the fact that these things blow up to about three or four inches, they have more air, hence this air could get cooler at night, keeping you cooler. So what you do now is before you lay into this bed in the summertime on the, uh, the, um, the cloth to keep you from sweating and keep you cooler, put this baby on. And it's just, it's the icing on the cake. You're, you're, you're good to go. You can sleep for comfort for a week. <laughs> or as however as long as you want to stay. Now you don't want to put too much pressure on this thing by just plopping your butt down in the middle, although those middle tripods there are the strongest ones. You want to kind of put your hands back and keep your feet on the ground and ease your lower body in and then lay back. But of course if you make those tripods uh, like two inches thick, you can just plop into it. So let's lay down in this thing and see how it, how it does.
Now another little tip for you to pay attention to here. Where I have this dual bed here, you have this poking up. A regular pull float, that might puncture it. But what you can do with this is just simply pull a little bit over and pull a little more over. And then you've got some a layer of protection right here uh, taking care of your, your pull float. That way you won't puncture it. You can kind of push it down in there like that. like a lax, lap of luxury. Now another thing is I showed you how the tubes were dipped. The thickness of this air mattress takes care of it all. Now this isn't any good for like a one-nighter, but if you can stay somewhere for two or three or four days, or maybe even your permanent shelter, set this up. Now, before you survival experts out there start, start complaining and going, hey, you're burning too much calories. This isn't a survival tactic. Like I said earlier, I, might, I think I said it earlier, this is for something for if you enjoy cutting, carving, chopping, and sawing. If you enjoy making things. And uh, if it's just really terribly hot, this mattress thing, the air in it cools overnight and keeps you cool. And uh, sometimes, as a matter of fact, you could just set this up and have nothing but a bug net around you if you want to in the summertime. But it's very comfortable, it's a fun project, uh, something if you enjoy doing. Uh, if you have to, carve one tripod a week, put them in a five gallon bucket and carry them with you. If it's going to be more for a permanent shelter, carve them and drive them in the ground probably three inches deep. And they'll be there forever. But it's just, it's a really comfortable bed, a fun project. Hope you enjoyed it. Sorry I couldn't finish it up in the woods, but you know how it is. I'm a cheap guy, so I buy cheap cameras. <laughs> Hope you enjoyed it. Hope you had fun with me. And I shall see you in the next one.